we're not supposed to be afraid of death. Oh, yeah. to life. You lazy man. You coward. Why didn't you do more? Well, when he was a little boy and he was asked what he wanted to do when he grew up, he said he wanted to be either a, a parson or a clown. <laughs> He's very clever, and I often think to myself, this is absolutely crazy. Here you are without the hate to your name, and yet, you know, you want to be one of these people who are running the country instead of the daft lot we've got now. Um, <laughs> but he wouldn't want to do that. Um, but he's capable of extraordinary things. He is an extraordinary person. I've known Garnet for uh, more than 30 years. He's, uh, he's an unusual character. He's, um, he's highly talented uh, in many directions, but he's also a sort of rather romantic idealist. He embarks on so many things which are interesting and valuable, but really never give him any money. He's always been short of money, painfully short on occasion. I mean, recently he got interested in, uh, in Houdini and um, I helped him make a part for uh, this, this box, this sort of trunk that he was going to climb into and then he's got to get out of. They've all got tremendous potential but they don't necessarily all, all sort of materialise into anything. And Garnet's always sort of struggled a bit like that. I've got uh, not only this, but also the mind reading, of course, and walking through a brick wall. <laughs> it's when he's working on, on his own that, he, that everything runs out of steam. Ultimately, it always does. <laughs> I'm have to give me a hand. I still don't 
I still don't have a wife or children of my own. You know, what could I offer a woman? I can't really set up a household. I couldn't afford to pay a mortgage or run a car. Well, I, I don't even drive a car. But I suppose, you know, that sense of, um, you know, ultimate um, intimacy and union with, with somebody is still something that a part of me yearns for and, and, and will do all my life, whatever happens. About 20 years ago, I visited the Highlands for the first time in search of what? I don't know. I love the idea of the solitude and the, and the isolation. I didn't have a tent and I didn't have a sleeping bag. All I had really in the way of provisions was two fruit loaves and 60 um, embassy number one. I'd made the mistake of assuming that the numbers on the contour lines referred to feet, uh, whereas in fact they referred to meters. So I was somewhat out in my calculations. Help! And I found myself slipping and sliding and tumbling and eventually I more or less rolled onto a tiny little section of beach and wedged in the rock, standing perpendicularly, was this uh, curious staff. It's this. The, uh, the mysterious staff of Gulvain, I call it. But this staff has haunted me for all these years. This is where I went 20 years ago, and that's where I found the staff. Yeah, was it hidden or...? It, it was wedged in the bank of the stream, on the far side of the stream. It was wedged in the rock. Yeah, I had to get into the stream and wade through the water in order to get this thing. You found it It is very, it's very strange, stopped. yes. In 1746, two ships arrived on the west coast of Scotland, bearing a cargo of gold, 40,000 golden coins. This money was intended as a war chest for Bonnie Prince Charlie, who wanted to regain the throne on behalf of the Stuart line, and who had a lot of supporters, especially in Scotland. But by the time the money arrived, Bonnie Prince Charlie and his Highland army had already been defeated at the Battle of Culloden. And so the money was carried into the Highlands and hidden somewhere on the shores of Loch Arkaig. which is exactly where I found myself stranded 20 years ago. Apparently, they buried the gold under a rock in a rivulet. 
Well, I found the staff wedged into a rock in a small rivulet. Maybe the staff that I found in the stream, in fact, is a marker for the position of the gold. What I want to do is to go back up there and have a look. At a conservative estimate, uh, it would be worth something in the order of one billion pounds. He is actually challenging uh, the possibility of this gold being there. He's had that stick all, all, all these years, and basically the story is based, based, based around the discovery of that and everything, everything that it means. What I need to do, I need you to put your dose of steroid up. I don't think you're having enough steroid. Mm -hmm. And that means to go to six tablets once a day, which is 30 milligrams. 30, okay. Yes. Any other problems? No? No, no, not really. Well, except to being old. Well, that unfortunately <laughs> is not something we're very good at treating on the National Health. I should be 90 this month. I know, you've got a big birthday coming up, haven't you? Yes, that's exciting. Same, we'll have to get same, you a bit better for that. Same day as the Queen's. Oh, oh, she's lucky to share my yes, birthday. Isn't that, isn't that a treat? <laughs> It has been very frustrating for me for the past few years because if I'm going to make a reasonable job of looking after my mum, that means I've got to be around the place and I've got to, you know, sort of dance to the, whatever tune is necessary, the doctor's visits and all the tablets and all this sort of thing. No sooner have I done one thing than, lo and behold, it's time to do another one. Is going by, um, and here I am, just sort of stuck in this uh, sort of nowhere land, this limbo. During the war, a uh, fellow student was Lucian Freud. He tried to seduce me avidly when I was 19. He was very annoyed when I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> wouldn't succumb. <laughs> what else have I done? Back in the 70s, I made up action songs and singing games for children. One of these songs, it's gone worldwide. It's sung all over the world by children. When all the cows were sleeping and the sun had gone to bed, up jumped the scarecrow and this is what he said. I'm a dingle dangle scarecrow with a flippy floppy hat. And I shake my hands like this and I shake my feet like that. When all the hens were roosting and the moon behind a cloud Up jumped the scarecrow and shouted very loud I'm a dingle dangle scarecrow with a flippy floppy hat And I shake my hands like this and I shake my feet like that Thinking this through, there's um, quite a lot of costs involved. I'm going to need a, a boat, obviously, and um, there's got to be a vehicle to tow the boat or take the boat up there, and um, maybe metal detectors, life jackets, I don't know what else. 
um, it's all adding up to quite a bit of money that I haven't really got. I could ask my mum for some money, I suppose, but I don't really want to do that. Um, well, we'll just have to see. So we'll go down here and join Joe, who is doing some extra preparation on the boat here. OK, it's a bit wibbly wobbly, but... Uh, nice firm grip and up. It doesn't feel too bad. For a second or two. Yeah. <laughs> OK. OK. It's magnificent, doesn't it? Uh, right. Uh, well, I've known Anne's. Um, Anne's a bit older than me, so uh, she's maybe 62 or something. I'm 64 now, so I was about 20, 24 when I met him. Well, 25, 30, well, it's about 35 years, something like that. No, 40 years. <laughs> we we'll just start off with the absolute basic turn it on. <laughs> He's one of the most imaginative, um, exciting people that I've ever met. Uh, it's not very well hidden. Oh, well, I hope it will be. <laughs> He has such high ideals. Yeah, straight on it. Yeah, straight. Yeah, yeah, straight on it. It's quite hard to live up to to um, uh, the sort of things that he, he he would like a woman to be. I think. <laughs> I'm just going to hammer this in. And I'll make garden sweep. He hasn't seen where I put it. There. <laughs> Look at God. You sorry, he's just pulling faces. <laughs> oh there, there it is. There it is. Yeah, well done, that's one of a little bit of a love interest, you might say, I don't know, I, I, I might have done anyway, um, with respect to, um, to uh, Jenny who plays the piano in the candle. And, uh, and I wasn't expecting that. And then she said, oh, oh, have you ever tiled a bathroom? And I said, yes. So, um, you know, we're kind of talking about maybe tiling her bathroom, which I'd like to do. Well, there's a part of me that wants to be in love. That's part of my nature, I suppose. I want to be in love, and I can't, I can't, I can't stop it any more than I can start it. I can't start it any more than I can stop it. Well, we're just on, on our way down to the uh, Clockhouse Cafe, which is near the station, in order to meet uh, Jilly. Garnet, I'm so sorry, I completely forgot. <clears throat> uh, well, I'm going to the cafe and uh, 
Send her a text saying, does that mean you're not coming today at all? Which, which it implies, because that's all she says. There's lots of exclamation marks and four O's in so sorry. in his life, they're the children of his life. This isn't just a trip on some historical quest. This is it. This is Garnet's life. Life is short. Before you know it, turn around and you're tiny. Turn around and you're grown. Oh God, if I don't get on with something now, the whole of life will have flitted past. Twenty years ago, when I found the staff in the stream, no one knew where I was. I had no food or shelter. I was lost. I lay down near the stream and resigned myself to die. I had no fear. Um, well, for the purposes of this um, expedition, I'm obviously going to need a vehicle and stuff like that, you know, which are fairly expensive things. I did have a fella stood by who was going to put up some money, but he dropped out. So it's getting a little bit uh, difficult at the moment. So, so the, I suppose the, the point is, would it be okay? Yes, yeah. Yes. I mean, I could repay it, I guess, you know, when I've managed to sell the things and so yes, on. Yes, That's okay, that's fine, yes. Oh, that's really good. Thank you. Yeah, here he is. This is it. Oh, how about that? <laughs> Hello. Oh, wow, how about that? I know, this is it. It's four wheel drive. Yeah. It's all MOT. Mm -hmm. Good tyres. He says it's been reliable. He says it's one lady owner. I'm not too <laughs> sure about that. Oh, oh how about that? The old landy. God, I'd love to drive it, actually. 
Oh, you've managed to lock the keys in somewhere. Yeah, it's exactly what I've managed to do. Uh, <laughs> Are all the keys on that key ring? Yes. Check that door. Oh, that's all right. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Best, mate. Okay, nice I'm one. sure it'll get you there, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, brilliant, thank you. Thanks again. You're welcome. Marvellous. All the best. We're going to the remotest part of the remotest place in the whole of Europe. <laughs> you could, by some strange chance, be you know, sort of virgin opportunity that has merely been overlooked um, over years and years and years. I mean, he spells it out. He spells it's it out. It's what we're going to do today is test the boat here. That's it. She's had a bit of a knock already. really. So now it's a question of retracing my steps. I've got to get back precisely to that point on the stream where I found the staff before. I know I came in through here somehow and over this mountain range here. The question is exactly where. This is the difficult part. Now, one odd thing I do remember is that when I was halfway up the mountain, down below, on the flat, I could see a mysterious structure, probably made of stone. Um, it had a very, very distinctive shape, something like this. A straight line broken by a circle. Press and hold the button until the indicators turn on. So, come on. I guess it's yeah. working. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so if I can find this, then I think I can use it as a guide, as a pointer towards the pass that leads up and over the mountain, precisely to that point on the stream. 
so I've got to, I don't know, I've got to figure out a way of rediscovering this. Identifying this shape, which of course is most clearly visible or distinctive from the air, from above. She's, um, yeah, she's in hospital at the moment, which is, um, which worries me deeply, really, because, um, I mean, they keep talking about sending her back home, and maybe they will, or maybe they won't. And I've just got a feeling that maybe she won't come home now. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to, um, I don't know how to cope with it, really. Some churches where there are sort of murals of medieval depictions of hell, and it shows all these little demons poking people with pitchforks. That's a bit what it feels like. I don't feel very old, I feel about 40 inside my head. You know, you suddenly look at your arms and you think, Oh my God, it was an old person's hand. It just, you know, I find it shocking, really. And I look at myself. I have very vivid dreams, and I quite often dream that I'm much younger. I dream that I can run and dance and swim and do all those things. For a minute, <laughs> get, get my head together. I'm, 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 I'm very conflicted about the way I feel about it. I have to say I'm conflicted. I don't, you know, sometimes I'm just, I just feel annoyed by it. I feel, I feel ground to dust by it, I really do. And I think, when will this ever end, you know? When will I be free? But sometimes I find myself thinking, you know, for God's sake, why don't you just die? You, you, should, you, know, you bastard, what, you shouldn't think that at all. Um, you know. Bless her, let her keep going as long as she possibly can.
for me, I don't know. But whatever it was, I'll never quite be that. Lots of people have these ambitious ideas. We all do, really, and we talk about it because it's a nice idea. But will it ever happen? Does it ever happen? Uh, of all the things i nearly done, there's many, many, many things that I've nearly done but not. Show me a man who hasn't. But, um, hopefully there's still time yet for me to do a little bit of something with what's left of, you know, with what's left of life. Well, while I'm away, the pages will probably do more than is necessary. Well, they'll be rushing it out with food and yes. cups of tea and things I'm like sure that. they will, yes. yes. And, 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 and Anne will show her face. Um, so I think that, I think it should be fine. Touch wood. So uh, I think, think it should be okay. I mean, I was worried, you know, that maybe... Well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 well, yeah. You'll be fine, yeah. I'll do the door. Find something, whatever it is. <laughs> if it's not gold, it's his heart's desire. Oh uh -huh. 
It's too beautiful. Settler, look over there. It's so beautiful. It's beyond, beyond description or belief. I've never been here, but I mean, it is just stunning. It's amazing. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Everywhere you turn, there's a mountain, there's water, there is wildlife. It's a dream place. <laughs> We've got it. We've got it. Well, apparently Charles, uh, Charles did bring some gold with him. Um, there's a bit of a story that one of Rob Roy's sons was one of the ones who was also entrusted with it. Uh, whether the gold exists or not, is that another story. Apparently, it's buried along someplace along the, back, the banks of uh, Walk Arcade. Uh, nobody's ever found it. Um, <laughs> What's the chances of finding it? <laughs> There's also a rumour that it might be up in Glen Peen on the rough bounds of Moida. Yes. It's yeah. supposed to be another cache at Bannockburn. Near Bannockburn yeah. House, there's mm. supposed to be another treasure chest buried. But that's probably under the motorway now. My idea is that the um, rock in the stream where I found the staff all those years ago might conceal some sort of uh, underwater cave or cavern or hollow in the river bank, something like that. That's where you think the gold is buried? Yes. That was quite a crucial moment, you know. On the test last time, the uh, propeller let us down, and uh, we, you know, we've, we've mended it. 
but it hasn't had another test. So this is the key moment, that boat has got to work. I was brought up mainly by my mum and by my grandmother, her mother, because my parents split up when I was about 18 months old. My dad, he um, in fact ran off with the woman, I think next door but one on the other side of the road or something, somebody very close by. I was 32, I think. 32. I went round to his house. I tracked him down. And he, and he said, uh, he said to me, "Who are you?" I don't know what a father is, really. I don't know what a father's supposed to be. That's probably one of the reasons why I haven't had children myself. Where there should be um, a dad, there's just a sort of dad shaped hole. I would have found it very difficult to stay with Garnet all that time. And I, I can't really imagine what life would have been like all these years. We were, you know, very close for, a, I don't know, a total of seven years, something like that. We were together for about eight years. We, you know, she'd stay with me and I'd stay with her. We had a lot of fun, you know, because he was always so exciting, he had such good ideas about things, and we'd go off on adventures. And... We'd been on holiday together, we went, went to the Red Sea. You know, we'd take the train with our bicycles and we'd go painting for the day. And, and the Sinai Desert and places like that. And You know, we, it was great fun. He's, he's, he's hard to, to, to be with, but also he's very exciting to be with. couldn't afford to, you know, wait around and I, I don't know, I had other ideas, I thought, I don't know what I thought. It's hard for me to have found out that, you know, my relationships that I pursued when I was in my thirties and so forth, that, you know, wonderful as they were, 
and painful as they were, what did it amount to? You know, what's left? After I'd gone and I split up, I, I, I had children, two children with somebody else, yeah. Which was hard for me because I really wanted to have children with Garnet. We can cut that out. <laughs>
Barnet starts on this journey 20 years ago. And it's been simmering in his mind ever since. What has really been going through his mind all those years? How is he going to uh, react when he actually sort of approaches that area where he sort of nearly lost his life? Because in the end, this is this is what the whole thing's all about. The story of Bonnie Pins Charlie, the treasure and everything suddenly evaporates. See what happens. Wow, look at that. It's so beautiful. That's the mouth of the river. Incredible. When I when I came down the mountainside when I was here 20 years ago, I came down this way. But that is definitely where I came down and found myself stranded in this tiny cove. And I'm just thinking here, you know, how amazing that I was picked up from that cove. There's nobody here. A similar time of the year. I could have, you know, I could have waited there forever and a day and nobody would have come. Not a soul. Not a soul. I can see down there the mouth of the stream, a stream, it must be the stream. I never saw it before, but that's going to run up this way through the glen, underneath the footbridge. And it's somewhere on the other side of that footbridge that I found the mysterious staff of Gulvay, whatever that may mean. It's incredible to be alive, to be alive now here in this incredible place. After all these years, still alive, still alive. It's unbelievable. Maybe it's all just a, maybe all this, this moment, the whole thing is just one beautiful illusion. Maybe I'll wake up tomorrow and, and uh, it'll all be gone. Well, it will be gone soon enough whether it's an illusion or not. When I came here 20 years ago, I looked death in the face. Dear God, I was lucky to get away with my life. I was 38, I suppose. And maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it was the, the last official day of my youth or something, I don't know. I'm 58 now. You know, time has stood still in this place. Well, maybe time has stood still for me. Too. So happy birthday to me. Where 
up above the clouds. Up above the clouds. Wow. Down there where the mists are now, in the wood in the base of the glen, that's where I found the, the mysterious staff. come down from the mountain in the morning before we actually enter the glen um, and that's going to be a, a key moment. Place that I've been waiting to to return to for all these years. I'm, I'm I, I can't wait. It's the same place. The bridge is different, it's just that the bridge looks different. Everything else is, it is the same. So I'm here. I've returned. I offer you my hand.
Sorry. Sorry, Mum. Sorry, Anne. Sorry. All the people. I'm sorry that I let you down. I'm sorry that I never quite measured up to your expectations of me sorry that i've hurt you i'm sorry I've, I've confused you i'm sorry that i've kept you waiting um, i'm sorry that i didn't make you more proud sorry i couldn't have done better that's the way it is I mean, you know, say sorry to people, say sorry to God, you know. I'm, I'm sorry, God. I wasted my life. What's he going to think of that? My way of saying sorry. A love letter from me to you, the people that love me. Something to make you proud of me, if you can be. You know, can't make up for all the time that's been lost, but it's, uh, it's something.
world isn't just stuff that you find in the ground or in a box marked X on a map. You know, your life it, it consists a lot of the time in, in thinking about the past and, and your place in it and the friends you had. And you, you gather up fragments of gold from those. Gold dust. of all the things I nearly done, I nearly met the Olga Khan. I nearly buzzed the southern piers with Avis in his death machine. I nearly traversed across the desert on a camel with the Bedouin. I nearly painted golden towers. I nearly practiced the guitar for hours. I nearly saw the meaning of her suffering soul. I stormed the pitch and scored a goal. I nearly entered my account on time. I nearly was an honest man. And of the things I nearly done, when all that's nearly done is through, what's done, what isn't, when the bell has rung, there is nothing left to nearly do. <laughs> if I can't grasp a late degree, ever say it was for lack of loving thee so let my heart be open and my way be true and let me put aside the things I nearly done and bring me daily closer to the things that I do do <laughs> Differently for you and me. It's not. 
inside story of Ukrainian security services staging the death of a Russian journalist. Fake news? And what did it achieve? The fake murder that fooled the world on BBC iPlayer.